Uh, let's talk about this uh, environment, uh, the, the setting that they are in. Tom, uh, we know this is the, the uh, uh, evocative, not merely of the, uh, the speech that uh, whose anniversary is celebrated today, the Martin Luther King I Have a Dream speech from 1963, but also John F. Kennedy's acceptance of the nomination in 1960, the outdoor quality. Uh, it, it, does the comparison end with being outdoors? Well, outdoors is one thing, but then that kind of setting with that uh, overhead shot on a tracking camera, it does, it strikes me at least as being just a little bit imperious, and it certainly is something the Republicans are already beginning to talk about. It seems to them that it's a little presumptuous, and my guess is that we'll begin to hear a little bit more about that. And of course, Keith, the irony is this is not the Obama campaign's insistence of having a sky cam, but it's, it's the... Uh, it's technology. It was CNN who first wanted to put this sky cam in, and then all the networks bought in. So here we are, the ones creating this imperial-looking shot that could end up backfiring on Obama, even though it wasn't their own campaign that wanted. Because when you look at the regular setting, it's fine. It's just like any other convention setting. It's not that much different than President Bush 2004 or, or what John Kerry had in 2004 or what was inside the Pepsi Center. It's just the way our technology is caught up. Look, had there been sky cams on the mall in Washington, D.C., 45 years ago tonight, uh, Martin Luther King might have looked imperial delivering that speech in front of the Lincoln Memorial. And, and, that, and that, of course, we for him tonight in this speech will be to be, to say to the American people, I am ready to be your president. I can fill all the spaces in the Oval Office and make the hard decisions and to outline for them as well how he feels about some of the specific issues that this country is confronting is whoever is the new president as they take office on January 20th. But what they've been after in the Republican Party is to say repeatedly, this guy's not ready, and one poll after another says that John McCain is much better prepared to be the commander-in-chief. So how all that symbolism will come into play tonight uh, against the backdrop of his words and his unquestionable great oratorical quasi style. Well, we'll see how that plays out. So, Chuck, uh, if we're accepting already the idea that uh, the setting, these columns, the, the, the uh, classical columns are evocative of the, the Virginia Republican Convention earlier this year and the George Bush acceptance in 2004, the, the idea here is that the overhead shot is the is the sign of uh, imperiousness? I'm, I'm not following the logic behind that. Look, Keith, it's not what I, mean, I understand where you're coming from in this, but it's not what what we think. It's how it's being presented. It's how the Republicans are going to try to take advantage of it and, and say, look, look at how he's regal. He's trying to present himself as something bigger than he is. It plays into what they've been trying to do. Look, if Obama gives the right speech, puts meat on the bones, and the setting is all they have to criticize, it's probably going to fade quickly. But we're just telling you, a lot of Republicans believe that the setting and this whole aerial shot and the fact that it is going to make him look larger than life figure plays into what the McCain campaign has been trying to do, which is take something that is a negative for them, the fact that Obama is more popular, Obama can fill a stadium with 80,000 people, and John McCain right now in Dayton, Ohio, is struggling to get 10,000 people to see the debut of his ticket. They're trying to take that and, you know, make that lemon and turn it into lemonade. They're trying to make it an extension of the Brandenburg Gate is what they're trying to do, which worked for them pretty well. At the same time, I must tell you, I remember in the closing days of the 2004 campaign, I was in Madison, Wisconsin. John Kerry had 100,000 people, Bruce Springsteen performing for him. I talked to somebody in the White House at the end of the day fear quavering in his voice, but of course then Osama bin Laden came out with some pretty harsh remarks on Friday, and all that effect went away. So this is, like everything else and what we've been dealing with, we'll have to see what the half-life of all of this is. But we're just telling you, this is what Republicans have looked at and said, aha, maybe there's an opportunity here.